So, what can yachts teach you, sailing boats, teach you about life? Well, I've owned a sailboat for a year and a half now. And in that time, I've done my basic navigation courses, I've done my basic crewmanship courses and things like that. And what you realize owning a yacht is there is danger everywhere. Danger, danger, danger. Sailing is a dangerous sport. It doesn't look like it when the seas are calm, but a calm sea is actually sometimes more dangerous because people get complacent. So let's start with how we get from one point to another on a yacht. Let's say we have the port of Dover in the UK and the port of Calais in France. And in between, we have the world's busiest, second busiest, I think, body of water, the English Channel of Death, because there is so much shipping there and the shipping moves fast, 20 miles an hour. Doesn't sound fast, but on the water where you can't see the horizon, they'll be on top of you in 20 minutes. So we have this body of water. We want to go from Dover to Calais. In life, it's pretty similar. You have a starting point and you want to go somewhere. Most people think, I will just go from here to there and that's it. But they're not taking into account the confounding factors. So as a yachtsman, first of all, we set our destination port and our secondary port. So not just Calais, I might want to go north or south of that if something goes wrong, or set a secondary port on the English coast, maybe the Isle of Wight, something similar. That's in case things go horribly wrong. Now the corollary in life, what's your destination? What's your fallback? If you don't become that top salesman at your company, and it's just, it turns out you're not good at it, what's your fallback? What are you going to do instead? The second confounding factor when you're sailing a boat are the tides and wind, because it's a sailboat after all. Wherever the water goes, that's where your boat is going, and that's what tides do. And tides change not every six hours, but sometimes hourly or two hourly, because of the direction of flow depending on the land around that flow of tides. So it's not a simple case of, hey, that six hour period, the tide goes here because the tide might go here for the first two hours and then here for the next two and then there for the next three. So it's not as simple as it seems. Then, of course, there's wind. We need to use the correct wind to move our boat. We can't sail into the wind. We have to sail with the wind or with the wind on the beam, which is the side of the boat. How does that translate to real life? Well, let's say you want to become a developer and you want to do something like React.js. How does the market look currently? That's what you need to ask yourself. Are people looking for React.js developers or not? Are they looking for a different kind of developer than that or not? Not just that, you can't just look at it and in a point of time or at a point of time, you have to discover, is the market changing? Are we going away from React? Are more people doing React? Are there more vacancies for it, et cetera, et cetera. So lots of people think Java is kind of an older language. It's still very, very popular. And the reason why is because many legacy systems were created in Java that need to keep running. Bank software being one of the classic ones. So banks pay a fortune for Java developers. If you chose Java as your specialty now, you'd never be out of a job until your retirement, I reckon. I reckon. And you would absolutely rake it in. Java's not particularly my thing. I prefer Kotlin, but hey, if I wanted to rake it in like a Java developer, I'd become a Java developer. Right, so that's the market and the changing market. Now, the final thing that owning a yacht taught me is traffic. So like I said earlier, traffic moving at 20 knots will be over the horizon and on top of your boat in 20 minutes. There is no warning for that. There are systems that will let you warn ahead of time. But in a small boat, you generally don't have access to those expensive systems and you don't want to weigh down your boat too much anyway. So traffic will come on you within 20 minutes and knock you flat. There are plenty of pictures of sailboats on the fronts of tankers and container ships in pieces and the owners, well, who knows where they went. Hopefully they got in a lifeboat, but in a collision like that, it's probably pretty unlikely, I think. How does that translate to real life? Well, 
you've got a path from where you are now to where you want to go or backwards, depending on the flipping of this camera. What can get in the way of that path? Office politics, the fact that people aren't using that technology that you're so in love with, your family. And I say that in the nicest possible way, but they do get in the way. They want attention. They want their husband. They want their father, etc. So again, you need to balance those expectations against what could get in the way. A top tip for you, if you're a guy like me, and I don't know about ladies because ladies can concentrate on two things at once-ish, better than guys can, get a separate room, soundproof it, get a soundproof door. When the door's shut, everyone knows they can't come in unless it's an emergency. If you're going to work on something from home as your side business or self-improvement to where you want to go. What corrections should you make for all those obstacles? So when you're on a boat, you're looking at this other boat tracking across in front of you. You can see that you're going to collide with them because they don't move relative to where you're looking even over time. That means you're on a collision course. So you have to either go in front of them, unadvisable, or behind them, advisable. Obviously you go behind because they can't then run you down, right? If something goes wrong and you're in front, you're in the danger zone. So you adjust your course, obviously, so they know what you're doing and you head in that direction. It may take you, well, it will take you longer to get to your destination, but you'll be alive at the end of it, which is a bonus, it's a plus. So in life, those corrections will take time to implement and they will lengthen the amount of time it takes to get to your destination. But as long as you make them early enough, the slightest correction can actually avoid all those problems. So that really is what owning a yacht taught me, or rather navigating a yacht in the dangerous English channel has taught me. If you're a beginner programmer, then you're probably a bit daunted facing a landscape of hundreds of languages and frameworks. What you need, even more than programming knowledge, is clarity around your learning journey. You need a map. A map that shows you what technical and non-technical skills are required as an employee, freelancer, or entrepreneur. And that's where my free guide comes in, Zero Dev to Hero Dev. It outlines top-level skills you need to become an employee, freelancer, entrepreneur, or any mixture of the three. If you want a map to success, then this guide is what you're looking for. Get it for free at imdev.net forward slash hero.